Today, this is a special on books. I, about a year ago when I started this, this was part of my resolution from last year. One of my goals was to start this book podcast. Didn't know what it was going to be called. For, for a second, it was going to be called Books and Bourbon. Gives me an excuse to drink bourbon, which I mostly do anyway, um, or some kind of drink. Uh, yeah, and uh, didn't know what it was going to be. Set forth to make five episodes, ended up making 18 looking now into this next year, 2016, hoping to bring you even more books. Uh, I'm setting myself up, say like, to do at least another six months, see how it goes. Um, I want to get up to about, there's, there's at least another 30 books that I'm really excited to bring you that I've already been working on finding some amazing guests and uh, breaking down some stories. So there's a lot more to come. I am so excited and uh, thanks. I just wanted to celebrate that like one one year part, one year mark with you. And um, I wanted to share with you uh, in this episode, usually I'm interviewing other people in this interview, in this interview, in this episode, I'm gonna share with you an interview from last week. I was interviewed by NPR. Uh, on my birthday, nonetheless, it was like one of the best birthday treats. It came about because I had written this article for the Huffington Post called Redesigning New Year's Resolutions. Uh, yeah, and in that I give my kind of three-step process for how I approach resolutions. And I'll share that with you in a second, and I'll share the interview with you. That's what we're going to do here. Um, and uh, yeah, it was really exciting. I guess somebody had, had read the article or liked the article and wanted to chat about it. I don't know. I, I got called in. I thought it was going to be four or five minutes to maybe chat about it. It turned out being I don't know, closer to 15 or so. And it was really cool. It was, you know, I think it's really important to take that time to uh, to just really download all of the things that I did last year, put some thought into them and then start a start anew. And that's what today is about. And um and that's where that's where I'm looking forward to 2016. So I'm just gonna in, in in a quick minute just gonna give you the gist of the article, and then I'm gonna play the interview so that you can you can go in depth a little more. But in general, here's what I do, and uh, here's what I'm doing today. And uh, hopefully, if you have some things that you are looking forward to in 2016, or whenever you're listening to this, you know, for the rest of the year from now or next year, um, hopefully this will help you a little bit. So my process. It's pretty simple. I try to think backwards. So if I want to accomplish a goal by a certain date, I'll say, so for example, in 2016, I can say, well, one year from today, who do I want to be, right? So I'll, I'll, I can write it out in like a journal. This is what I'll do. I'll just take a lot of scrap paper. I'll buy a new journal or, or, or grab one and then just write out, okay, the date is and this is like one year from now, so January 1st, 2017, and here's all the things I did last year, right? Maybe I spent more time playing guitar, I meditated every day, I created 52 on books episodes, you know, got to interview, all, you know, say all the things that happened, and I read them in past tense. Um, doing that seems to, to make it feel more powerful, like, like it happened, right? Like it's a reality. Uh, I'll do that and I'll also do a mind map, which I have some images that I can share with you, but it's really just like I write the date that I want to accomplish the thing by uh, in the center. And then you can just around it, write all the things that are happening in that year, right? So you can write 2016 and write all the, the things around it uh, for next year. Uh, and, and there's no holds barred. So next year I have things like record 52 on books episodes. Uh, everything from that to write a screenplay, right? And I have a bubble here that says, do nothing every single day, take 100% time off. So <laughs> right here, you can see that there's a little bit of conflict. You can write things down and they don't have to. Uh, yeah, clearly I can't take 100% of the time off and do these other things. So that brings us to the second part, which is choosing projects. So looking at all the things you could possibly do you know things that you would everything you want to mind map you want to get everything out even things that you might be embarrassed to admit you want to do just get them all out and now you're going to choose um and here it's tough to say how you should choose i mean cer certain things are like can you do it within this time period you know is it possible with you know certain limitations like money or you know if you're going to make 52 podcasts on books what are you giving up while well, you're giving up 
I don't know, maybe a certain vacation that you want to take, right? So it's just weighing all those options. One place that I really try to come back to with all the things that I create is what I call, like, it's my vision, I guess, for what I'm, my, my greater vision of what I'm trying to do. And it may sound a little bit kind of lofty or airy, and it's supposed to be in a way. Um, in business, there's this term called a BHAG. It's a big, hairy, audacious goal. And companies will have, you know, their BHAG is the thing that they are trying to accomplish that, um, you know, might take 10 years. It might be something that has, you know, 50% chance of failure. It's a really big goal that you're setting for yourself that you're, you know, putting out in the future. Um, you know, for, for example, like when Ford Motor Company, right, when they came out in the early 1900s, their big, hairy, audacious goal was democratize the automobile it was like nobody has automobiles right it was like they're they're only for for fancy for rich people and ford was like nope everyone's going to be able to afford one one day right that was his big thing or like when nike came out in the 60s their big goal was we we're going to crush adidas who was the biggest at the time and clearly they were able to do it uh, and i believe that people have big, hairy, audacious goals. I think if you look at somebody like Aziz Ansari, I would say his goal, and I'm making this up, I'm riffing, but it might be something like, you know, I'm going to shed light on uh, cultural issues and, and dating in New York City, right? Maybe somebody like Amy Schumer, a lot of her comedy tends to come back to hitting on issues of uh, feminism and uh, women on TV. And she has a lot of, you know, great skits and stuff that kind of always kind of comes back to those issues. Not always, but there's there's a lot of that kind of vibe. Um, I'm looking for, and I think it's a challenge, but trying to figure out, you know, what is my point of view or what is my vision? And as I choose these projects, I want to choose ones that really, really amplify that. Um, for me, I know it has something to do, like a lot of the, the projects that I'm passionate about are about, you know, <laughs> it's just making the world a better place through education is definitely a theme. Um, I think education is so important and and just really passionate about, I think there's a lot of information out there in the world. Um, there's a lot of science, there's a lot of research and it's the, it's the, doesn't matter, it doesn't do a damn thing if the social norms and the habits of our lives, if we don't change as people. So I feel like, you know, I, I know that there's a lot of great resources out there, but oftentimes it'll take, you know, 50 to 100 years to see some of these big movements, right, that, that, that change and that change people's lives. And I would like to get that to people quicker. And, you know, whether that comes through a podcast or writing or teaching in class or comedy or however that manifests itself, I think there's a lot of different opportunities to teach and to awaken people. And I know, I know that sounds like so big and like, who are you? Chris to say that you're going to do this. Who? Okay. Yeah. Like you're a little, yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Me talking into a mic on this podcast in my bedroom, uh, here in Key West is really going to make a big difference, uh, on education. But I think it's with every little every day and it's with constant practice that coming back to our goals, you know, you can accomplish your bigger goal for the year and hopefully your life goal. And everything is just just part of that process. Again, to come back to our resolutions, like the first step is putting everything out there and then prioritizing it. And find your vision. Find why you are alive, what's exciting to you, what you want to bring into the world that people maybe aren't talking about, that needs some attention, um, and that you'd love to dedicate yourself to. At, you know, at the, at the grandest, at the most grandest, um, you know, or, or at least just something that you, you think that you're interested in and give it a shot. So that's number two. And number three, the final step here is once you've chosen projects that you think are worthy of your year, put those on the calendar, figure out a way to execute on them, have a friend keep you accountable. Uh, there's a variety of different ways. I've tried a lot of different things and these are in the blog post, which I get, again, I'll link to, um, and, asking some questions. If you have any questions on, Hey, is this better than this? Um, I'll weigh in on it and you know, it's going to be different for every person, but I'm happy to chat about it. And I want to hear if you have some insights into how to keep better resolutions and to keep yourself accountable. So those are the three steps. Um, mind mapping, number one, number two, choosing projects, and number three, figuring out a way to execute on time. That's what it's all about. So, uh, without further ado, 
I'm going to share with you now the NPR interview um, that discusses this blog post and this theory that I put forth. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Happy New Year. It's the first day of the year. And uh, I'm looking forward to sharing more with you this year. Thanks so much for listening. All right, here's the interview. Well, it's that time of year, time to tack, take stock of what you accomplished and what goals you left on the table. Some of us create New Year's resolutions that center around health, lose weight, eat better, run faster. Then there are those career-oriented ones. Find a new job, be more creative, get a raise. Whatever the goal, we approach a new year with hopes of improvement and renewed energy of taking on better behavior. But how many of us follow through and what are we doing wrong? Maybe we're taking the wrong approach. Joining me now to talk about his approach is Chris Castiglione, host of One Month. It's an online school for entrepreneurs. He's also been a teacher and consultant for numerous companies. He has one idea of how to stick to those goals. Hey, Chris, welcome to The Morning Shift. Hey, Tony, how's it going? How's it going? Pretty good. Now, I want to start right off by saying you don't even like to use that word resolutions. Why not? I just don't. I use goals you know I try to make a vision just basically like where do I want to be one year from now and then I then I work backwards from that yeah but what's wrong with that word I, I resolve to do this oh um well I don't know if there's anything wrong with the word as much as just like it's overused or kind of misused uh-huh. and um people don't take a lot of responsibility with it so I'm just kind of doing just am I doing my own thing I think so you think it sort of cheapens the self-improvement process? I think it might, yeah, a little, a little bit. It yeah. just, um, yeah. I, I want to go back to what you said. You you start from the end, so to speak, and, and I understand yeah. that you sort of uh, look forward by, by writing yourself a letter as if it is the end of that year. Yeah, That's yeah, really exactly. That's really cool. Yeah, and um, I I journal a lot. Like at, at the end of every day, I'll like today or every day, I'll just write a little something about what I what I did today, and uh-huh. I imagine what would that journal be like a year from today. Yeah. So and you would write today is January first, twenty sixteen. I can't believe the year's coming up at coming at me, and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and you know, I guess I guess for now it would be. Uh, 2017 right like a year year from january 1st 2017 what what would next what would i be how does that how does that approach help you what it helps me do is work backwards and choose projects and like literally put them on the calendar Mm -hmm. um because i mean time is is the thing you know i think I think in the past I've chose things that are like, you can't fit into a year or you're not accountable for. So doing this allows me to start going, okay, in a year I want to be here. What do I have to do over the next 12 months to get there and start plotting it out? We are talking about New Year's resolutions here on The Morning Shift. Our number, 312-923-9239. What resolutions are you setting for yourself in 2016? So you, it, it, it sounds like it's got to be very visible, Chris, something to look at every day. Uh, what are some prompts that people can use to help them start with, say, this, this letter thing, this, this project-based thing where you're looking to the end of the new year? Well, I mean, it's, it's, I, think there's, I think there's two parts to it. I think uh-huh. the first is, is uh, what I call mind mapping. Like, just feel free right now to write down all of the things that you might want to do next year, mm-hmm. you know, where, where you might want to be and just get those out. And then the next part is choosing some and holding yourself accountable. So, you know, for that, I've, you know, I've employed having, having friends, like doing it with a friend. We, we had a, have a bet with a few friends right now for the end of this year to get a few things done. Um, something like that really, <laughs> really helps, you know, having other people en- enrolled in what you're doing. What's the bet? Oh, do you want to know? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so each of, there's three of us in this, uh, there's four of us in this actually. And uh, each of us, I am writing a web series. Uh-huh. And a friend of mine is writing a musical. <laughs> huh. We're all, we chose, we chose some, some small things to do. <laughs> Um, you know, we all have full time jobs too, and uh, that you know, doesn't. These are just those don't those don't sound like small things. I mean, and and if you lose, what happens? But that's the thing. It's not about it's not about winning or losing, uh-huh. and, and it's about learning. Yeah. And it's about if I jump in over my head, like I've already learned 
I'll tell you, I'm losing the bet, to be honest. Like, I'm not going to make it. Um, but that's fine because I've learned so much. Like, I've, I've written the script and I've, um, I, I've, you know, taken acting lessons. Like, there's all these things you have to do on the way. And so to me, I feel like if I hit 70% of my goal, I feel pretty good. Although I will lose the bet, which has some <laughs> consequences I can tell you about if you want to know. I want to yeah, get, get back to the mind mapping. And yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it. Explain to our audience what it is because it's it's more than just a list yeah yeah definitely um i i have a few prompts right i'll just i'll yeah. write down on a page just just like so we're, so we're thinking next year right like uh -huh. 2016 write it down in the middle of the page and then you know i think you know i traveled to here in the past tense like where did i travel this year and it, we're talking next year but a year from now so where did i travel um words what words would i use to describe this year um, I spent more time with, you know, in these kind of prompts, uh, the things that may, looking back, I know that my um, my like remembering self will be like, I'm really glad, I'm really glad I, I got that done. Um, yeah, it helps. You have in this mind map, if you will, in the middle, you have the year. So let's say 2016. And then there are these tentacles, travel, proud, words. Uh, these are things that, that are important to you. Uh, how do you keep track of those things? Uh, do you have post-it notes every day reminding you, okay, uh, travel, <laughs> this is what I need to get close to that goal? Yeah, yeah. The the mind map uh, that I shared with you that, that you're looking at, that's like everything yeah. that I could have done. And some choices need to be made. So the, I'll choose a few. And I literally... This is, this is a little bit over the, over the top maybe, but I literally put post-it notes for all the things right next to my bed and a calendar. I bought a, I bought a wall calendar, like uh -huh. not a Google calendar, and I put it up and right next to the post-its, I'm just putting them on. You know, I have a little marker that I use. Um, I don't It's It's really important to me just to keep growing and learning and uh, waking up every morning and seeing that. I don't know. It's it's really helpful. And yeah. so, how do you how do you break this down? I understand there are things called project, and then there are the process based resolutions. Yeah, you know, it's I think it's whatever works for you. Um, for me, I have a few different project you know software. Like I use Evernote or Asana, like these different kind of ways to just organize stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put a little alert. You know, Google Calendars is good. You can set up a, a monthly alert. I actually made a text alert that texts me like and it's like check your check that you're on on track you know once a week or once a day you can do whatever you want um so there's certain ways that you can kind of set up software or checks and balances um to keep you on track or a friend you know at the end of the month you have a check in with a friend uh -huh. call these these are all things i do um it's all experiments too you know it's all it's all for fun and and i'm enjoying it and if if i wasn't i don't you don't yeah, think don't you'd think be doing I'm... it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, because it's. I think you think everybody, I'm not going to pretend to have like the answers for every single person out there. But I think you take from it what you can, you know, get inspired, learn something new. Um, yeah, we are what we re repeatedly do. I think it's an Aristotle quote. Um, so it's just like, I think every, every day it, I wanted to write more this year and, uh -huh. and be able to call myself a writer and... I think by writing every day, I do that, and it's not that I need to say, "Oh, I didn't, you know, get published, or I didn't, whatever." Like, you know, for as example. long as you're writing, as long as you do, as long as I'm writing, and yeah. and that's the standpoint. And I feel I feel more confident now, looking back on this year, that I did that, and I feel good about it. We are talking about how to keep those New Year's resolutions with Chris Castiglione. He's the host of One Month. It's an online school for entrepreneurs. I have uh, a couple of of resolutions. One is to uh, relearn how to play the piano. So that's that's one of mine. If you out there, if you have one, we want to know what it is. Maybe you can ask Chris a question on how to keep it. Our number, 312-923-9239. So when you choose projects, Chris, um, you, you break down things that, that speak to vision, values, methods, obstacles. Explain those a little bit. Um, For instance, yeah. you have one, you know, what do I really want? In parentheses, you have vision. Yeah, yeah. What do I really want? These are just some questions. Um, I actually borrowed those from, from Tony Robbins. Um, just some questions. I think it's easy to choose things that you feel. 
it's it's really I'm just trying to connect with things that are important to me and not important because someone says it should be or someone else's version of success. So it was just some checks that I heard Tony Robbins say once that I thought, okay, now I mind map. I drew out all these things. You know, I want to go, you know, work from Berlin for a month. I want to write a screenplay. I want to start a podcast. And, and then it's just like some checks and balances like, yeah. okay, okay, let's step back. What do I really want? You know, what's important about this? If I get it, where will I be? You know, well, how um, important is it to start? I mean, how should you be realistic? Do you start with pie in the sky stuff and, and kind of check it off? You know, thinking, well, I'm not going to make it to Antarctica, even though I'd like to. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like to jump. I just, I like the phrase jump in over my head. Uh -huh. So um, I'll, I'll prioritize. And I mean, it's also a constant checking in at the end of every month and reprioritizing. I mean, there's definitely some things that fell off the list. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that I'm going in really, really strong on, I mean, like this year I, I also set out, let's say like to make a podcast. I have this on books podcast and um, I, I was like, I'm going to do a podcast every week. That's really hard to do an episode every week. And then it was like, well, what's the least amount that I can do and I did 17 episodes. I actually said if I did 10, that would be good. Um, but I changed that about halfway through the year. And and that, again, just comes back to the learning. So so I like to just jump in over my head. If it's if it's Antarctica next year, um, I would want to break that apart a little bit, uh -huh. you know, and think about before I even assign myself up to do it, like break it apart into subtasks. Like, do I have enough <laughs> money to do that? Do I, how long does it take to go? I mean, I can do research for 15 minutes right. and let you know if that's going to fit into my schedule for the year. Um, I have no <laughs> idea. I've <laughs> Let's take a couple of calls. We, get, we got one okay. uh, from Lucy in Oak Park. Hi, Lucy. Hi, guys. So what's your New Year's resolution? Um, well, I've never been a big fan of having sort of explicit, I want to go here or do this, but um, I like sort of thinking about what I want to be like in a particular year. Huh. So my, my motto for the last year has been, Say What You Mean 2015, and luckily the rhyme uh, rolls over into next year as well. So I've just been trying to be um, a lot more direct about what I want and and not to, you know, talk around things, to, to say what I mean. And how's that been going for you? It's been going really well. I, I like myself when I say what I mean, when I really ask for what I want, and, and yeah, I've been happy about it. Were there little reminders uh, to go with that along the way throughout the year, something uh, akin to what yeah, uh, Chris is talking um, about? I think the rhyme was really helpful for me ah. um, to just be like, this is what this is what I'm trying to do. Say what you mean 2015. And I also uh, would talk about it with a friend of mine um, and her and I would remind ourselves. Um, so when we were in social situations, when I was like, oh, I don't know what I want to do about whatever. And she'd be like, say what you mean 2015. This is what we're doing. <laughs> well, um, you can do that. You can do that through 2019 because it'll I run. Know. Yeah. Great. Hey, happy new year. Thanks. Place. Thanks for happy calling. New year. Let's Bye. take another call. Uh, Tara from uh, Lincolnshire. Good morning. Good morning. So, New Year's resolution? So, kind of funny, like Lucy, I actually don't really set specific resolutions. I have what I call a theme for each year. Uh -huh. And what I do is I actually create a poster at the beginning of the year that has an image, and it usually has year of, and then whatever my theme is. This year was compassionate abiding. And I actually then take that same image and I make it my wallpaper on my computer and my phone and my iPad. And I have little reminders for me everywhere. So constant reminders. Well, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. How about another call? Uh, Rogers Park, Christy. Hi, Christy. How's it going, guys? Good. Um, so I, I wanted to say that my resolution is actually to stop saying should. I find that there's so much tension and I think uh, self-judgment when I can't or I've noticed when I have not been able to abide by my resolutions. And so my, my resolution is to stop judging myself so harshly and to um, kind of walk every day with the knowledge that I can do better at many things and that I should do better, but um, to not keep myself um, so strictly uh, according to, to any kind of language or value because I'm a human. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. Thanks a lot for yeah. your call. So specifically with that one, Chris, I mean, how taking that one, how would you apply it to your approach? Yeah, and I just want to say, um, man, your listeners are, are really inspiring. I think it's so great to just um, acknowledge these things. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, and you asking about my approach, 
I think just saying these things like like all, all of the listeners are doing and, and like you did as well, Tony, I think just like just saying these aloud, it allows you to create like you said it. And and everyone that just listened and just contributed is going to remember, hey, there's that thing that I said on NPR that one day. Um you know, I should maybe stick to that, that should thing. And uh, I think that's important. I think that's why it's important to, you know, if you don't have the opportunity to come on NPR and tell someone, tell tell someone in your family, tell your loved one, yeah. write it down. I think externalizing it. And then people can help you too, which is what I noticed. As soon as I, I, I wrote a, I wrote a blog post about this and that's um, where I got a bit of attention for it. And as soon as I just wrote that, some people started reaching out to help me. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't even expect that. And that's a really nice um benefit of, of doing this so did you uh did you um before i let you go did you meet all of your goals as we look toward the end of uh, 2015 <laughs> i did not but i did i i feel good about myself i did a lot of things um my i like the the user the um the user the listener with the saying uh-huh. about, you know i think my saying this year was you know at the end of the year just be fiercely creative and um and i i really feel like I accomplished that even though all the projects may, may or may not have gotten done but I, I did a lot and I feel really really great about it well here's to 2016 all right thanks again for listening that was my NPR interview I'm um, talking about New Year's resolutions oh and I'm the co-founder of one month and the host of on books they seem to have put them together but all good you can find the article from the Huffington Post uh, linked to from my website on-books.com I'm on Twitter at onbookshow that's it at onbookshow Um, and if you like onbooks you can subscribe on iTunes and I'll be putting out a new one every week you can share it with some friends you can write to me let me know what you're thinking let me know how I can make the show better what do you want to hear who do you want to hear from as far as authors this year Um, books you want talked about hit me up Uh, I'm here for you I want to share these stories with you and I want to hear back and uh, know what's going on in your life this year. So I'm looking forward to more of these, and uh, thanks for listening. Oh, and one more thing. Here's Los Campesinos playing out the show with my year in lists. Enjoy. You said send me stationery to make me horny. So I always write your letters in multicolors, decorating envelopes. For four damn extended metaphors. I get carried away on the back. Natural disaster fits with puzzle tape and with kids sticking plaster. Nothing says I miss you quite like a poetry cut in your door with a Stanley knife. My year in lists. Stomping on your fingers as you're clinging on to the abyss.